So this chapter is all about tissues. So let's go ahead and begin by looking at the first slide. So we learned that a tissue is a group of specialized cells performing one or more specific functions. Furthermore, we learned that we have four basic or general or principal types of tissue. We have epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue, which could also be referred to as neural tissue. So in lab, if you are being asked to identify, to give, or to name the basic or general tissue type, then you should be answering one of these four. Therefore, your answer should either be epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, or nervous tissue. So let's begin with epithelial tissue. So this is the tissue that faces the exposed surfaces, or the lumens. It lines internal passageways, canals, chambers, lumens, cavities, ducts. Lastly, it forms glands. So for example, your sweat glands and your oil glands, those are made of epithelial tissue. So what I've done is I've made a drawing of this tube-like structure. Right, so let's look at this first image that I drew. Okay, so this is a tube-like structure. So I want you to think of a blood vessel, which has a tube-like structure. I want you to think of a digestive tract, which parts of it has a tube-like structure. The point being is think of a tube-like structure. So what we want to look for is where do we find this epithelial tissue? What is the tissue that's facing the exposed surfaces or the lumens? Well, first of all, what is a lumen? So we know that a lumen is the inside space. It's the hollow cavity. It's the center portion of this tube-like structure. So imagine, once again, a blood vessel or any tube-like structure in the body. All right, so what we'll need to do is to cut it. All right, so this is why I made this dash line to indicate a slice. So we're gonna make this imaginary slice through this tube-like structure, and we're gonna open it up like an open book. So therefore, we can find this epithelial tissue. So now that we've opened it up, and we've identified where this lumen or exposed surface is, what we now need to find is where is this epithelial tissue. So the epithelial tissue, ladies and gentlemen, is this right here. So right there is the epithelial tissue. Now, why is this the epithelial tissue? Because once again, this is the tissue that is facing the exposed surface or the lumen. So now that we can conceptualize this by making this imaginary slice, let's go back to this tube-like structure. So I'll put A, B, C designations, and I'll ask you, where should we look for this epithelial tissue? Now that we've made this imaginary slice, and open it up. All right, so we'll do A, all right, here's A. The middle region, we'll do B, and this region, where we have the red line, we'll put C, all right? So once again, we're looking for that epithelial tissue layer. If you answered C, then you are correct. Why? Because, once again, the epithelial tissue is what's facing the exposed surfaces or the lumens, the inside space, the hollow cavity. All right, so now that we've looked at this tube-like structure, let's now look at other structures that don't quite take on a tube-like structure. So I've made some additional illustration, as you can see on this uh, bottom right-hand corner. So we have a structure that possibly could look like this, or a structure that possibly could look like this. So now, where do we find the epithelial tissue layer? Remember, it is the layer that is facing the exposed surfaces or the lumen. Well, folks, if you answered this right there, this red line, as epithelial tissue, then you are correct, right? So epithelial tissue. Now, what about this structure? Where do we find the epithelial tissue? If you label this red line as the epithelial tissue, then yes you are correct as well. All right, so your takeaway from this is that epithelial tissue is what's facing, once again, the exposed surfaces or the lumen. So the next basic tissue type is connective tissue. So connective tissue fills internal spaces. It provides structural support for other tissues. It transports materials within the body, 
and it also stores energy reserves. So as far as connective tissue is concerned, this is the most diverse of the four basic tissue types. When we look at connective tissue and look at the many different types of connective tissue, you're going to see they can look quite different from each other. For example, bone is connective tissue. Blood is connective tissue. We can agree that bone looks nothing like blood, but make no mistake, it's connective tissue. So this goes back to me saying that connective tissue, in comparison to the other basic tissue types, this is far more diverse. Then we have muscle tissue. So muscle tissue is specialized for contraction. So we have three types of muscle tissue. We have smooth muscle, we have cardiac muscle, and we have skeletal muscle. The last basic or general or principal types of tissue is nervous tissue. So this carries information from one body part to another in the form of electrical impulses called action potentials. And action potentials will be abbreviated as a P. So the details of action potentials will definitely be discussed later on when we get to nervous tissue, but not quite in this chapter. So let's now talk about cellular junctions. What are they? Well, they're points of contact between cells. Now, before we get into the details of the five main types of cell junctions, I want to emphasize the fact that we are going to be focusing on the plasma membrane. Remember, the plasma membrane, which is also referred to as the cell membrane, is made up of the phospholipid bilayer. So once again, we are focusing primarily on these plasma membranes of these cells. So the first type of cellular junction is the tight junction. So the tight junction are connections between plasma membrane proteins of neighboring cells. So let's look at this image that I have included in this slide. So what we're looking at is the plasma membrane of cell number one, Take note, this is a phospholipid bilayer and plasma membrane of cell number two. Of course, phospholipid bilayer as well. And this right here are your transmembrane proteins. So these are those transmembrane proteins that I'm referring to. So these will interlock. Transmembrane protein coming from plasma membrane of cell number one will interlock or will connect with transmembrane protein from plasma membrane of cell number two. So where do we find these tight junctions? Well, we find them in the epithelia of the digestive system, the urinary system, and the blood vessels. Now, before we get into more details about the tight junctions, what I wanna do is momentarily step aside and look at this illustration that I made to the left. So this is an illustration of a cell, and there is a nucleus right in the middle. So what I want to do is label the parts of the plasma membrane of this cell. So the area that's highlighted in yellow, right? so I'll go ahead and make an arrow like this, we are going to call this part of the plasma membrane as the apical surface. Apical surface. Now some folks say apical surface. That works as well. I say apical surface. So this is the surface that is facing the lumen, that is facing the exposed surface. Now what about the area that I shaded in green? What is that? So this area, this part of the plasma membrane that's shaded in green, we're going to call this the lateral surface. What about the area that's shaded in blue? What do we call that? So I'll make an arrow this way, and we're going to call this the basal surface. Now what is the basal surface facing? Well, this is facing the deeper tissue, the unexposed part. Now we can sometimes combine the lateral surface and the basal surface into one term. We can refer to this also as the basolateral. So if you see this basolateral, that just basically means combining both the lateral surface and the basal surface into one. It turns out that these tight junctions are at the apical surface. 
So if we want to find these tight junctions, then we want to focus on the apical surface side of these cells. All right, so let's now look at this illustration that I made to the right. So I have three cells that I've illustrated, and let's find those tight junctions. So where should I be looking at? Well, I should be focusing on the apical surface side because that's where we're going to find these tight junctions. So what I'll do is I'll circle the tight junctions, and these are the ones that are in red. And I'll make sure to put an arrow like this so you know that these are those tight junctions. Now, the space between these cells, we call these the intercellular spaces or the paracellular space. So this is the space that we find between these cells. All right, so now that we see these tight junctions, what exactly are they there for? Well, it turns out that they are there to prevent substances from diffusing fluids from diffusing between the cells. So this is really, really important in areas that we want to contain certain fluids, what we want, where we want to contain certain solutes. So think of, for example, the stomach. The lumen of our stomach has a pH of 2, which is extremely acidic. We need it to be that acidic, by the way. So those acids, we certainly want to contain them. We don't want that acid anywhere but the lumen of the stomach. How do we ensure that the acids do not go between the cells? So we have tight junctions. So tight junctions will prevent the acids from seeping in between the cells, in between those intercellular spaces, those paracellular spaces. So just so that we're clear, we're going to go back to this image and I will put acids. We're going to use acids as the example. So think of the lumen of your stomach. So these tight junctions will prevent the acids from going in between the cells. They can't go in between. So what happens? Well, that, what happens is the acids are now contained in the lumen of the stomach. Well, what about the urinary system? So a good example of an organ that's part of the urinary system is the urinary bladder. So inside the lumen of that urinary bladder is urine. So we need to make sure that that urine is contained. It's confined in the lumen of that urinary bladder. We do not want that urine seeping in between the cells. So what do you expect to find between the cells that line the urinary bladder? Well, guess what? We're going to find tight junctions. Therefore, containing that urine to ensure that it stays in the lumen of the urinary bladder. So these are what these tight junctions are all about. So let's look at some of these images that I've included in this slide. And again, the whole point is to really emphasize the tight junctions and where we find them. So once again, here is the plasma membrane of cell number one, plasma membrane of cell number two. And the tight junctions are right there. So the tight junctions from cell number one and tight junctions from cell number two, once again, transmembrane proteins interlock or connect, preventing fluid from seeping in between those intercellular spaces or paracellular spaces. So carefully look at this image that way to ensure that you've understood what this is about. Now, one last thing I want to point out before we move on to the next slide. Let's say we're looking at a blood vessel. Okay? And inside the lumen of the blood vessel is blood. That's why they're called blood vessels. So what I've illustrated are cells that line the blood vessel. So let me ask you this. We want blood to stay put. We want blood to remain in the lumen of this blood vessel. So what should we have between these cells? Well, if your answer is tight junctions, you are correct. So what I'm going to do right now is illustrate the tight junctions that are found between the cells. So once again, these are transmembrane proteins found in the plasma membrane of these cells that interlock together. So you need to think anytime we want to containerize, to compartmentalize, to make sure that fluids stay where they need to stay, then what we need to have are tight junctions between the cells that line these organs or tissues.